Good morning. We're on lesson 101. And for a Monday morning, that's not too terrible because we've done trinomial factoring before. In fact, in lesson 69, we introduced it, basic trinomials. In lesson uh, 70, I think, we factored common factors out of it. And then we've done regular factoring. And then I think in lesson 73, we did the difference of two squares. So today should be our last lesson with something new, factoring trinomials, because today we're going to put those things together and we're going to have them in the denominator as well as factoring in the numerator. Okay, let me try something here. Let's just take, uh, oh, we'll take equation A, one half, and uh, plus equation B, one third, and let's see, I want to come up with, I want to add them. All right, so what am I going to do? Well, I have to come up with a common denominator, don't I? Now, you don't do it this way, but I want you to think about this for a second. So what's not under this one right here? Well, there's no 3. What's not under this one? There's no 2. So what that really equals is 3 plus 2, which equals 5 over this denominator. Well, you've learned to just write it as 5 sixths. But I want you to understand that these two are considered factors of this. And while this seems awfully simple and you're saying, why are we doing this, Mr. Reed? Because I want you to remember and develop, if you haven't already, an algorithm or a procedure. Because starting today, they're not going to be as easy as they have been before. Let me give you an idea. Let's try this problem here. 7x divided by x squared plus 4x minus 21 plus 9 divided by x squared minus 3x. OK? Well, let's see. We learned that that's negative. So that means I'm going to have the two factors. I'm going to have an x plus and an x minus. We've learned to factor a common factor out of that. That leaves x minus 3. And now I have to find this. What two numbers, when multiplied together, give me 21. When added together, give me 4. Well, let's see. It won't be 1 and 21 because the delta is not 4. 2 won't work. How about 3 and 7? The delta is 4. So if I had a positive 7 and a negative 3 and added them, I would get my positive 4. If I multiplied them, I'd get my negative 21. So it looks to me like it's a plus 7 and a minus 3. OK? Now, I need to come up with a common denominator. All right? Let's see. Here's my first term. Here's my second term. And by the way, I got this one under here also. So that's a duplicate. And here's my third term. So I have three parts to this. They are x times x minus 3 times x plus 7. Kind of a lousy 7, but it works, doesn't it? OK. So look at this. This is the first one. This is the second one. This is the third one. Now look up here. What number or numbers are not under that numerator? Well, it's the first one, number 1. What are not under the 9? I've got the 1 and the 2. I don't have the what? I don't have the 3. So now I'm going to rewrite this. What's 7x times x? It's 7x squared plus what's 9 times x? 9x plus what's 9 times 7? 9 times 7 is not 67. It's 63. Now, all I have to do is take my common denominator that I've already used and put it where it belongs. Now, that seems like a long way to do that. But if you need this procedure to get used to it, there's nothing wrong with it. OK? Let's try another one here. See if you get the hang of it. Now, if you want to watch this again in slow motion and pause it, it doesn't hurt. but. All right, let's try this one. 2x squared plus 4x 
divided by x cubed plus x squared minus 6x plus 4 divided by x squared minus 2x. Okay? Well, let's see. Look at here. I got five terms, and they all have a what? They all have an x in them. So the first thing I'm going to do is factor an x out of there. So if I took an x out of the numerator, I would have 2x plus 4 left. If I factored an x out of the denominator, I would have x squared plus x minus 6 left. If I went over here to the next term, I can factor an x out of that, and that leaves me x minus 2. This is negative. That's positive. The negative tells me I have an x plus, and I have an x minus. And yes, I can cancel those x's. I don't need them. All right, so what's my common denominator? Well, before I do that, I have to find out what these two are. What two numbers, when multiplied together, give me a 6. When added together, give me a 1. Well, the only two I can think of would be a 2 and 3, and it would be a positive 3 and a negative 2, which would give me a positive 1 and a negative 6. So I'm going to use x plus 3 and x minus 2. All right, what is my common denominator? There's my first term. There's my second term. I'm duplicating the second term here, aren't I? And what is this? This is my third term. So I'm going to have three terms. x times x minus 2 times x plus 3. There's my first term. There's my second term. And there's my third term. All right? Now I'm running out of room, so I'm going to erase this up here. I don't need it anymore. Okay? And I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to take that x away that we canceled. And I'm going to say, what is not underneath this numerator? Here's the 3. Here's the 2. What's missing? There's an x missing, term 1. What's not underneath this numerator? I've got 1 and 2. I'm missing number 3. All right? I'm going to distribute. What's x times 2x? It's 2x squared. What's x times 4? Plus 4x. Plus what? 4 times x is plus 4x. Plus what? Plus 12. I can put these two together, can't I? So that becomes 2x squared plus 8x plus 12, all divided by our common denominator of x times x minus 2 times x plus 3. Now, you may look at the numerator and say, but Mr. Reed, you can factor a 2 out of there. Well, I could, but it wouldn't help me because I can't pull a 2 out of here. I can't take that 2 out that's part of a team. So there's nothing I can do. That is my final answer. Now, you don't need to use this yourself until you get the habit, but there's nothing wrong in using it if you have to, okay? We'll see you tomorrow.